Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Well, 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 what do you know? Just like that, the cryptocurrency market cap is over 200 billion yet again. Right now, the market cap at 204.9 billion. Uh, and BTC dominance still hugging that 66% mark. When are we going to see altcoins veer from Bitcoin? Well, historically, we've seen it happen um, after a bull run. So after a Bitcoin bull run, Bitcoin reaches its high, then Bitcoin slowly starts declining. Uh, and then right after that, altcoins tend to go up for another couple of days and then they decrease in value. They start collapsing as well. It's kind of uh, Bitcoin is the leading indicator in that matter. But anyway, let's get back to the market. Cryptocurrency doing fairly well overnight. And late yesterday afternoon, evening, uh, Bitcoin trading at 75.47, Ethereum 152, XRP 0.227. And we can see it on the charts, guys. Bitcoin starting, struggling to make some gains here. Yesterday was uh, quite impressive for Bitcoin. And the rest of the market is just chugging along, trying to keep up with it. Uh, so could we have hit that, that point for Bitcoin where sellers were finally like, I've had enough. Uh, and buyers are taking over now. We've seen a decline in the market since Bitcoin hit this high, uh, 14,000 per BTC. Guys, I never thought it was actually going to be, I didn't think this retracement was going to take this long, okay? This was all the way back in June, and right now it is the end of November, so the end of June, end of November. So that is a six-month retracement after we saw an upswing for Bitcoin from uh, April uh, all the way to June, so April, May, June, three month bull rally, saw huge gains, and then a retracement uh, over six months. So when you look at this again, guys, when you look at this over the longer period, okay, we're, 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 we're still in really good shape. This is Bitcoin on the monthly. And when you look at it on the monthly, you can see big swings up, and the momentum coming down shorter uh, candlesticks uh, and more of them compared to the bullish candlesticks. So that just signifies that over a longer period of time, we're seeing this decrease uh, versus the increase that we saw from April to June. So I think that this is just a retracement. But the question is, what is that bottom point? Are we in it now? Could it retrace further? This, These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. And of course, you know, when we look at uh, cryptos like XRP, Everything's still at the mercy of Bitcoin. We don't have the real world utility that can catapult XRP to new heights. So we're at the mercy of Bitcoin. And guys, please, if you are buying cryptocurrency, please, 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 please do your own research. Make sure you're purchasing a cryptocurrency that's right for you and make sure you keep it safe on a Ledger Nano S. Guys, this week and this week alone, there's a 30% sale, uh, a Black Friday sale on the Ledger website. Uh, so you can get any Ledger model you want right now on sale. Uh, guys, I have a link in the description of every video. You can use my link. You don't have to use my link. They've got the Nano X. They've got a backup pack. So uh, just letting you guys know that if you don't have a Ledger already. And guys, I got to tell you, I've noticed that the the FUD machine against Ripple and XRP continues to push out bullcrap, and I hope you guys aren't getting duped by this. I really do hope this. I'm going to go over some of these articles and just, you know, not really going to go in depth on any of them because it's all real crap, to be honest, um, but... I just wanted to address some of this. So this from Ant15969495 on Twitter uh, links to this. XRP price could go down to zero by next February. So XRP price could go down to zero. Essentially, it states every single reason why XRP could, note that, could go down in price you know, because, well, Ripple owns most of the coins, they have control over it, which Ripple does have most of the coins in escrow, uh, but they don't have control over it. The escrow is released on a schedule. There's this regression model that Alex Kruger says uh, shows the price could go to zero, which... Again, guys, we're in a retracement pattern right now for the entire market, so uh, all cryptocurrencies are just following Bitcoin at this moment. Uh, essentially just FUD. FUD to scare you out of your XRP holdings so that the big guys can buy it from you. That's right. This is all coordinated. Otherwise, why are we seeing so much all at once? People are doing this to scare you. Just remember that. Uh, and this, I thought this was hilarious. This is from Tyler Winklevoss now. Probably not Tyler Winklevoss, but posted this on Quora. Is XRP coin a scam? Um, and guys, I don't know if you guys remember this 
article from uh, several months ago. Uh, but this guy here, Jason Bloomberg, wrote this article back on March 1st, 2019. Is Ripple a scam? Using this exact same inaccurate flowchart to discuss this. So somebody trying to pose as Tyler Winklevoss is, is uh, you know, posting more inaccurate facts about Ripple and XRP uh, to, to bring the coins price down, to essentially sabotage or try to get in the heads of XRP holders so that they relinquish their coins at, uh, what's the price right now? 22.5, 22.5 cents. And this is the best time for them to be doing this too. Because if you're inexperienced and you know you bought up here, let's say at 39 cents, only back in July, and you thought to yourself, you know, uh, well, we did see it go to 50 cents. I'm gonna buy here, this is a deal. Uh, at 39 cents and then XRP went down and down and down and now it's at 22 cents, 22 and a half. You might be thinking to yourself, did I make a bung investment? But if you've done your own research and you know all the reasons why you should be buying XRP, you will have the confidence to take a look at something like this and laugh in the face of this Tyler Winklevoss wannabe because it is ridiculous. So there's that, uh, obviously copying uh, Jason Bloomberg's inaccurate and unresearched article from March 1st. And then there's this now. I love the Daily Hodel. Uh, they do straight up reporting and I don't consider them a FUD website at all. I saw this, XRP is less decentralized than Bitcoin, Ethereum and other crypto assets due to Ripple's involvement, uh, says institutional giant Grayscale. Now they are just quoting Grayscale's report here, which I find interesting. Uh, this one is a little fuddy, but I'm going to actually get into this one because they actually do have some interesting things uh, they discuss here. So the institutional crypto asset manager Grayscale has released an in-depth report on digital asset XRP, analyzing the coin's history, protocol, price, transaction speed, and more. The report says early adopters of the XRP ledger focused on challenging existing financial systems, creating a fast protocol that has lifted the digital asset to become the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap. Okay, so they talk about why it's good and how it eliminates long processing time, so on and so forth. Developers integrated features, including a consensus algorithm and escrow schedule. Uh, okay. So they do highlight some of the positive aspects of XRP, but then they go, however, the report also says Ripple's direct efforts to grow the XRP ecosystem and its ownership of more than half of the total supply of XRP inherently makes the protocol less decentralized than other crypto assets. Well, although that is technically true in a way, I mean, you can say if you unleash a cryptocurrency asset to the masses, and close your eyes and 10 years later see what happens, that technically that cryptocurrency is more decentralized than let's say something like Ripple that's been properly orchestrated to work within the system in order to fulfill uh, the needs that need to be fulfilled. But guys, think of it this way. Their direct efforts to grow the XRP ecosystem because they own a lot of XRP, um, that to me is no different than any whale holding a bunch of Bitcoin, a boatload of Bitcoin, and doing everything in their power to um, direct the Bitcoin ecosystem in their favor. So like when Ripple is transparent about what they're doing, how much they own, uh, and, 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 and what the end goal is for their company, and how they want the XRP ecosystem to thrive, I mean, they're upfront about this. That to me seems a lot less shady than let's say miners in China, mining for Bitcoin, having dominance over that, or you know even just whales owning Bitcoin, moving the market as they see fit. Uh, and, and to me, that's a lot worse because when you have a lot of Bitcoin, you can make these kinds of moves. Like I did a video last summer, summer 2018. Yeah, last summer, or would that be considered two summers ago? Anyway, summer 2018 saying what it took to be a Bitcoin whale right at the beginning. And I think if you had just put in something like a hundred or $200,000 into Bitcoin in 2011, which I know that sounds like a lot of money to most of you. It's, it's a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. That is a lot of money for most people, but in investment terms, it's actually not that much in order to be able to move the crypto market single-handedly. If you own most of something, you have the power. And so this is the point that this article is trying to make against Ripple, although at the same time, they're totally not addressing the fact that Bitcoin falls victim to the same problems because of market manipulation by whales 
And in fact, it's worse with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is moving the entire cryptocurrency market. When the market moves on Bitcoin, the rest of the cryptocurrency market follows. And this is why XRP holders, for example, are really frustrated because, you know, the underlying utility of XRP is so vastly different than Bitcoin. Why can't XRP just decouple from the crypto market? And why can't XRP just do its own thing? Well, eventually, I think, eventually it will. Right now, we're not there. We're at the mercy of the big guy, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's manipulated. And so if you know that and you listen to somebody like me or whoever, the modern investor, has similar theories about these types of issues, if you listen to us and we're telling you this, you have more knowledge about the cryptocurrency uh, market. And you can look at an article like this and challenge it intellectually with your knowledge. This is what these channels are all about in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, it's about investing, they're about making money, but also use your critical thinking to really understand. And I'm not saying just read and take it in and just parrot back what uh, some Tyler Winklevoss wannabe is telling you on the internet. Uh, because this is clearly, this, this is all a hoax. Guys, these people aren't real. They're in it for themselves. They're in it to win it for themselves, whatever they own, probably some other cryptocurrency. They see Ripple as a threat. They see that the XRP community is strong and that we are, you know, we're thriving in the XRP community. I believe the XRP community is one of the biggest on Twitter, one of the biggest that has a presence outside of, of actually Ripple and Spring initiatives, like the developers that are actually developing on it. Social media, we are one of the biggest here. So these guys are seeing this as a threat because they could see us as having a potential influence on XRP price, on XRP sales. I got into XRP before I started doing this. I'm not doing this as an ulterior motive. Uh, I do this because I was researching XRP every day anyway. Uh, and I wanna share my knowledge with you guys. And so I think these guys are seeing XRP as a threat and they are trying to take us down at any chance they get. So it's a correlation guys, I really do think it's a correlation. Think about it, the more FUD comes out, the lower the market is, just to put that little bit more doubt in your head to get you to sell your coins, your cryptocurrencies, whatever it is. And even mainstream media does it too, right? You know, when Bitcoin went down, we heard we heard this back in 2018 when Bitcoin went down uh, to all-time lows. The mainstream media would say every now and then they would release uh, news pieces that would say, well, Bitcoin is down 95 or 96 or 94, whatever it was, percent since its all-time high of 20,000 a year ago. And I'm sure a lot of people would snicker. A lot of people would be like, yeah, thank goodness I didn't get into that. But then behind the scenes, what is happening? Wall Street's getting into crypto. Governments are regulating cryptocurrency. The IMF is involved. Ripple's partnering with banks. We know Bitcoin is also being uh, recognized as a store of value. So behind the scenes, we don't hear this in mainstream media, but behind the scenes, we're seeing something very, very different. Anyways, guys, I didn't think this was gonna be this kind of a video, but I, uh, I, I feel really passionate about this. Uh, I, I, I don't want you guys to get duped by this onslaught of FUD that we have been seeing, this flood of FUD, this FUD flood. So this video is for you battling the trolls, battling the naysayers. Anyways, I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.